Today's video is all about CPP. If you've ever asked yourself, how much is CPP? What are my estimated monthly CPP benefits? Or what happens if I take early CPP? Then this video is for you. This channel is all about making personal finance easy so we can be more confident and independent with our money. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, hit the subscribe button and let's get started on today's topic. CPP is our Canadian pension plan and the amount that you're entitled to depends on a few factors how long you've been paying into the pension, how much you've paid into the pension, and the age at which you decide to start receiving your CPP. Now, typically, CPP is normally paid to us once we reach the age of 65. However, we can elect to take it as early as age 60 or as late as age 70. So if you're planning on retiring, how much can you actually get in CPP payments every year? Well, according to the Government of Canada, the average amount Canadians will receive in CPP is about $730 a month. So compared to the maximum of $1,155, it's important to understand that most Canadians are only going to receive about 50% of the maximum entitlement. That's why it's so important to find out ahead of time what you're entitled to while making your retirement plans. You can do this by logging into your My Service Canada account, and I'll include a link in the description so it's easy for you to find. If you've never logged in before, you will need to create an account. In some cases, you may decide to take your CPP before the age of 65. So in that case, what happens to the amount of your monthly pension? Taking CPP before the age of 65 reduces the monthly payment amount that you'll receive, and that's simply because your pension is now being spread out over a longer period of time. Each year that you take CPP prior to 65 will lower your payment amount by 7.2%. So if you were to take CPP at age 60, for example, that would lower your CPP payment by a total of 36%. In this example, let's assume that Bob would be entitled to what the average Canadian receives at age 65, $730. However, he's going to retire early and he'd like to start collecting his pension at age 60 instead. As a result, Bob's new CPP pension is going to be $467 a month, not $730. That's 36% less than what he was initially entitled to. But what if the situation was different and Bob decided he wasn't going to collect a CPP until age 70? Well, in that case, every year that you wait to collect your CPP after age 65, it increases by 8.4%. So at age 70, Bob's $730 payment would now be $1,036 per month starting at the age of 70, 42% more than his original payment. So how do you know when the best time is to take CPP? Well, part of the decision is going to be based on financial need. Do you need the money now to maintain your lifestyle or to afford the basic necessities? If not, then the other main deciding factor is going to be longevity. What is the average lifespan of someone in your family and how long would you have to live to make it worth it to hold off on taking CPP early? So let's assume that Bob's making his decision based on longevity. He's retiring at age 60, but he doesn't need a CPP right away. So he's trying to decide should he take it now or should he wait until age 65? This chart is showing us how much Bob's CPP payments would be at age 60 versus waiting until 65. It also shows us the total cumulative amounts he'll receive over his lifetime based on those two ages. Let's take a look at age 75. That's where we're going to see that over Bob's lifetime, he will receive more money in total CPP payments if he waits until age 65. To put it more bluntly, that is a break-even age that Bob needs to live until to make it worthwhile postponing CPP payments until 65, if his goal is to receive the most CPP over his lifetime. What happens, however, if Bob does elect to take CPP at age 60, but he decides to go back to work and work part-time? How is that going to impact how much he's going to get every month? If you're working and collecting CPP and still paying into CPP, then that's referred to as a post-retirement benefit. The portion that you pay into CPP while you're working and collecting CPP will be paid to you the following year, and it increases every single year that you continue to work and pay into it. The maximum payment that you can receive is $346.47 each year starting in 2019, and that's assuming you're paying in the maximum amount every year. Now in Bob's case, he retired when he turned 60, and he started collecting CPP at 60 as well but he's decided to go back to work and is now earning $30,000 a year. So based on earning $30,000 and how much Bob is required to pay into CPP, even though he's still collecting his CPP pension, 
This will earn Bob a post-retirement benefit of $108. And that just means that Bob's annual CPP amount will now be $108 higher moving forward. And if he continues to work until age 65, that amount will increase to $163. Now, it is important to know that post-retirement benefit amounts do not include a survivor's benefit, meaning if Bob were to die, that $163 that he's collecting will be lost forever. Unlike regular CPP, which will pay your spouse 60% of what you were receiving. This wraps up our video on the Canada Pension Plan. If you have any questions, let me know by commenting below. And don't forget, hit that subscribe and bell button so you don't miss out on any future weekly videos. Thanks for watching.